Hi folks, this is Dr. Robert Sivis, and I am the Carb Addiction Doc. However, I've got a little mini series going on, there are four parts to this, and we're talking about inflammation, and specifically inflammation as it pertains to um, our diet and the most dominant cause of inflammation uh, globally in the modern uh, human body because of, of what we've migrated to eat and drink. And you're going to find the, the crackpots and the nuts on the internet. Yeah, crackpots and nuts telling you, oh, this, this spinach causes inflammation and this thing causes... All right, it may do, but not globally. There is, however, a global trigger of inflammation. If you're a mammal, if you're a human, it causes it in all mammals and certainly in all humans. So let's look at a specific element of vascular inflammation. And as a surgeon, there are times when you operate on the intestinal tract and we're not able to use that intestinal tract for a period of time postoperatively where we have to give people intravenous nutrition. And because TPN, total parenteral nutrition, T, uh, intravenous nutrition, um, was created in the 1970s in the high days of believing that carbohydrates were so necessary in our diet, where carbohydrates were just going up and up and up as a percentage of calories that we consumed, as we created TPN, the mindset was that the dominant source of energy for the human body was sugar in the form of dextrose, up to a 70% concentration, but usually 25% concentration of dextrose in TPN, firstly. And secondly, fat was really bad, so the no saturated fat, all the polyunsaturated fatty acids and uh, the monounsaturated fatty acids in TPN. So a lot of soy products and that kind of thing. So uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about the fat. I want to talk about the sugar. Because one of the critical things that we've got to understand is that with TPN, there were two very important things that we did. Number one, um, when you go up, you have to go up slowly and you have to come down slowly because people can get hyperglycemic when you give it too quickly and hypoglycemic if you stop it right away. Their blood sugar drops too low because almost always when you give TPN with 25% dextrose, you have to add an insulin. Why? Because you made them into an insulin-dependent diabetic by infusing that amount of sugar. It doesn't make sense because the sickest people are diabetics when it comes to wound healing and, and recovery. So it boggles my mind that they instantly make these people diabetic because you have to have sugar in your TPN. Be that as it may, when we're talking about inflammation, one of the other things that we have to do when we put people on TPN is we have to put in a long IV. We have to put a long IV in that goes almost to the heart, to the big vessels, because that concentration of sugar in a small peripheral blood vessel, in a small vein, will irritate the lining of that vein so intensely that it'll form blood clots and that it'll cause inflammation and that vein will clot off. Think about that, folks. When we use more than a 5 or 10% dextrose infusion in a vein, and even a 10% dextrose infusion can clot that vein. That's 10 grams in 100 mLs, 10%. We'll clot that vein. So what's happening at a, a microscopic level, what's happening is the sugar, the, the cells that line the blood vessels are called endothelial cells, and they should be nice and flat and inert. They should have a very nice smooth lining on top of them, completely inert, and blood should just flow by nice and happily. la di da di da <laughs> But what happens is when you put sugar in, the sugar very quickly gets into those endothelial cells and it activates them. They round up and they bulge into the lumen, so they narrow the lumen. They also start exposing little parts of the underlying basement membrane, the underlying structure of the vessel wall, not protected by these nice smooth cells. And those places are procoagulant. They form little blood clots. The clotting factor comes in, your fibrin, uh, uh, fibrin fibrinogen, fibrin uh, clots form, platelets get in there, platelets get activated, that's my PhD, 
and then it attracts lymphocytes and you form this blood clot that clots the blood vessels. So we've learned, smart humans, <laughs> some, somewhat, we've learned to run that TPN into the big blood vessels where the vessels are very wide, there's huge amounts of flow, so there's all this dilution. And the concentration isn't quite enough to cause that kind of damage, at least obviously. At least obviously, because we know that that damage does occur, but not as obviously as in the peripheral veins. So I'm just using that as a very simplistic example of vascular inflammation. Vascular inflammation caused by the direct infusion of sugar into those blood vessels. Now, here's an interesting thing, folks. If you measure the concentration of that blood, it's only up a few points. It's not very high. It's not very high from normal. Normal being about 85 milligram, uh, 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 milligrams per deciliter in the US system. That's a normal blood sugar. 85 milligrams per deciliter is a normal blood sugar. 85 or lower. I typically run 65 to 75, but 85 is your normal. Okay? Average blood sugar. So, where, where do we every day recreate a milder form of the TPN function? TPN is giving intravenous nutrition, well, our diet. Well, we put in our face quantity and percentage and concentration and frequency, all that sugar and starch that we're eating, and it doesn't matter. And this is important. It doesn't matter if it goes in as an apple or ice cream. It doesn't matter if it goes in as whole wheat rice or brown rice uh, or white rice. It doesn't matter if it's a baked potato or French fries. It doesn't matter how that sugar gets into our bodies. It doesn't matter. But the sugar gets taken up our intestine and dumped directly into the portal venous system, goes to the liver, and the first place it causes damage, this is my PhD, is in the liver cells, the sinusoids, the lining cells of the liver. And you get inflammation of the liver. You get inflammation of the vasculature of the liver. Some of that sugar, most of that sugar gets absorbed by the liver and gets turned to fat or stored as glycogen. But a lot of it spills over into the systemic blood supply. And where does it go? It goes from the liver through the superior vena cava directly to the heart. From the heart to the lungs, back to the heart. And then the greatest exposure, the greatest exposure of the blood vascular system to sugar that you eat are the arteries. Now, remember that the first exposure happens in the portal vein in the sinusoids of the liver that are turning over very quickly that can actually handle sugar pretty well, then into the, inferior, the superior vena cava, which is a very big, wide blood vessel. So while those, the portal venous system and the superior vena cava are veins, they don't get as badly affected because they're huge and there's a huge volume of flow. The first vessels to see the highest concentration of sugar beyond the lungs are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries. And that's why sugar is at its highest concentration in the narrowest of those tiny little blood vessels in your heart. Those coronary arteries are the blood vessels that provide blood supply to your heart. And it's the highest concentration. Then the blood flows to the rest of your body, gets used up by the tissues, and only then, after the tissues have extracted whatever sugar they need, they need, only then does it go into your veins and gets returned back to your, to your heart. And when we measure venous blood sugar, it is the lowest concentration in the human body. Think about that, folks. Your blood sugar is the lowest it ever is where we measure it. Having a hmm, having an aha moment right now. So when you look at a blood sugar that's elevated, it's logarithmically higher 
in the arteries that come straight from the gut and from your liver. We can't even measure that in normal human beings. We kind of got to kill you or stick needles and catheters into your large arteries. So think about the enormity of the elevated blood sugar in those arteries in your heart. And then you're surprised that you get a heart attack from sugar. Oh, it's not sugar. It's the lipids. I forgot. Sorry. It's the LDL that causes your... The organs that see the highest concentration of blood sugar in the human body are the heart, the liver, the heart, and then the brain. Clearly, that's where most of the blood's going for most people. But Some people are brain dead and they, they don't have a lot of blood flow to their brains. That's okay. But for most of us, our brains and our heart and our liver are the three important organs that get the greatest blood supply and therefore the greatest concentration of sugar. Now do you understand where your heart attack and your stroke comes from and your fatty liver comes from? Because what's happening, just like that example of TPM that I gave in your arms, exactly the same thing is happening with your dietary sugar. You can't run that off. You can't exercise that sugar away. That damage happens as that sugar hits your blood vessels before it's even gotten to your muscles. Nobody smokes three cigarettes and goes for a run to breathe out the nicotine. But all these Yahoo people, oh, I can burn off my ice cream in the gym. You may be able to burn off the calories, but this is not a calorie problem. This is a sugar inflammatory problem. And it's going to kill you, folks. And when you get that CAC score, that coronary artery calcium score, what you're measuring there is inflammation of those blood vessels. When you could get a carotid ultrasound, you're measuring inflammation in those high sugar vessels. You want to shorten your life? Eat sugar. Create that vascular inflammation. Now, here's what's interesting. is Some people are able to produce huge amounts of insulin. And that insulin goes from the pancreas through the portal vein, just like that sugar, to the liver. And the liver is then very good at sucking up huge amounts of that sugar, a 90 plus percent first pass effect. And it converts that sugar to glycogen. In fact, those people are obesogenic, they become enormous. So their blood sugars are relatively normal and they don't typically suffer the scourges of that intravascular inflammation. However, genetically, there are a number of people who can't produce a lot of insulin. They can't produce a lot of insulin. So all that sugar can't be used by the liver and converted to fat under the influence of insulin. That's what insulin does. It drives sugar to fat in the liver. And if they can't produce enough, that sugar bypasses the liver, washes straight into the systemic circulation, goes to your heart, goes to your brain. And those people, when it gets up into your blood vessels, and we measure that in the veins, your blood sugar is elevated. And eventually that chronic elevated blood sugar damages the red blood cells. And we call that type 2 diabetes. But by the time your venous blood sugar has gone high, think about the amount of damage that's already happened to your brain and your heart and the other organs supplied by arteries in the human body, your toes, your eyes, your kidneys. In males, your penis, the nerves that go to the penis. That's diabetes, folks. That's diabetes. Vascular inflammation caused by chronic excessive amounts of sugar. This is, not, this is not rocket science. This is very, very simple. Chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption causes vascular inflammation through the medium of sugar. And then your clotting factors respond to that. And the final part of clotting is the layering down of lipid of fat. Oh, it's the fat in our bloodstream that's causing our... And then they put you on a damn statin. I don't want to go down that, down that pathway, folks. There's plenty of videos on this channel that discuss that. You want to fix the problem? Stop putting sugar and starch in your face. Stop putting sugar and starch in your face. Allow your body to recover its blood sugar. That's vascular inflammation. Diabetes is a vascular inflammatory condition 
caused by chronically elevated blood sugar levels. And it affects everybody that consumes the standard American diet. Your choice. But that's diabetes. That's vascular inflammation. So that's the second compartment in the human body that has been affected by the inflammation that sugar causes. Two to go. If you like the content of this video, drop me a couple of dollars. Actually, it doesn't come to me. We've got a charitable organization, but it comes to Robert uh, at jackschildren.com on PayPal. You can drop some money on our Patreon account, Carb Addiction Doc. And if you'd like a consultation to help you to remedy the damage of sugar in your bloodstream, you can call, text, WhatsApp, 561-517-0642. Set up a consult. I am a practicing clinical doctor. We can help you if you choose to, to improve the inflammatory nature of sugar in your body. Till next time, I am the Carb Addiction Doc.